13. So verse number 20. Matthew 16, 13 to 20. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea of Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, yes. boy Jonah, mm -hmm. for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth All right. shall be bound in heaven, Yes. and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Amen. While you're standing, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. God's gift, God's gift to, us to us is the same gift, the same gift that he put Peter with. Amen. 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 You may be seated. God's gifts, that's plural, to us is the same gifts that he gave. Amen. Amen.
Father, we thank you for guiding us for these many years that you've watched from the newborn to the elders that you protected us while you guided us. So this morning, I pray that you would guide my stammering tongue, that you would bring back to my remembrance all those things that I forgot. That your word would go out and not come back void. That you would take Robert and place him behind the cross. Yes, Lord. That there'll be more of you and less of me. In Jesus' name, amen. God's gifts to us. He's given us many gifts, but this morning I want to concentrate on one apostle, a disciple that realized the gifts that God gave him, he did not exercise those when he needed them the most. And we have to remember that God has given us gifts, some more than others, but he has equipped us for Battle. Hello, somebody. I, I, I might be a long time this morning. If I don't get no amens, I'm going to have to break it down a little bit further. I want you to get this. That God's gifts to us he gave them for us. And this disciple called Peter. We all know Peter. Peter was the one that was the angel. He's the one that stepped forward and, 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 and said things out of character. But it showed his love for God, for Jesus. It showed his love for Jesus. And we all do it some on our thoughts way. We express our love for him as we do to our family. Our wives, our husbands, and our kids. So four number three gifts that God gave us, that he gave Peter, that we have to realize. The first gift is that God gave Peter the gift of position. Everybody can't be the president of the United States. Everybody cannot be a lawyer. Everybody can't be a doctor. But God freely gives each one of us gifts. And it's so sad because so many of them neglect to use the gift that God has given them. He gave me the gift to communicate. Secondly, God 
God gave Peter the gifts of power and passion. The third one is God gave Peter the gift of perseverance. And all of these gifts, only three of them, God gave them to us as well. God has given us so many gifts, strength, wisdom, strategy, endurance, focus, courage, toughness. These sound like the description of someone on television, the television show called Survival. Have you ever watched it? Not just anybody can be on that show. It's called survival. And the same thing God has given us, survival skills. Hello, somebody. <laughs> it's called the Bible. He tells us how to survive in this mean world. You have to have survival skills. Amen. What you talking about, Pastor? I was a greenhorn on the streets. I had no street sense, but I had common sense. See, I didn't have the sense to know that everybody wants something from you. If you got it, they want it. They all will check you out from feet to head to see if you have something they want. They all, Pastor, I can handle myself on the streets. <laughs> Maybe you can. But I had no street sense. And I lost a whole lot <laughs> because they saw me coming. <laughs> and when you least expect it, they are just lurking around. I'm sitting at the bar. I said, I just want to go have me a drink. You know? And then I'm leaving. But as I was sitting at the bar, this guy sitting next to me. He had three cars, and he had one beat. And he started shuffling those cars first. <laughs> he looked at me and said, uh, I have two kings and one ace. See the ace? All right, shuffle the cars. And I find that ace. I tell him, it's right there. He said, You're right. <laughs> so he said, I'll tell you what. I bet you ten dollars. You can't find that key. You can't find that ace again. <laughs> I said, all right, I put it up. He shuffled him up. Found it. <laughs> got the ten dollars, okay? He said, "Now you got to give me a chance to get my money back." Twenty days. Say twenty dollars this time. I said, "All right." He shuffled them cards up. I picked the one, the wrong one. So he wanted this ten, he wanted ten of mine. <laughs> now I'm a competitor, to so now I say, "Hey." Let's go one more time. <laughs> and I was so gullible, I sit there and lost every penny in my pocket. <laughs> Feeling like a fool. So here's what he tell me. He said, man, I'm going to give you a chance to win your money back. I said, man, I don't have no money. He looked at my head and he saw I had a ring on my finger. A bowl ring. Ring that 
got to play it in the blue bunny ball. They gave us the ring. I said, no, man, I ain't playing for my ring. But I wanted my money back. So I said, all right, man. He shuffled them cards. He said, what are you? He said, I said, right there. I said, no, I'm not playing. So I lost my ball ring. See here. I had a watch. I'm gullible, y'all. He said, I'm going to give you a chance to get your money back and your ring back. Now I'm wired up because I know I can get the right call. He took my watch, too. <laughs> so I was so just I, I said, I don't have nothing else, baby. I think I say, what up? He said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a chance to get it back. I said, well, I don't have nothing. He said, you got a family in town? I said, yeah. He said, go borrow some money for him. This is how gullible yeah. I was. Not using the gift that God gave me was sense. Mm -hmm. So I went home and I got my big sister. And I told her what happened and she just was laughing at me. She said, you fell for that problem. I said, since I did. <laughs> he got my money, he got my ring, and he got my watch. Got everything I had. <laughs> so she came back to the pub with me. He was sitting there waiting. <laughs> my sister said, look, man, look, mister. She said, you good. And you took advantage of my little brother. He lied. He said, man, I'm... he did it on his own. I didn't force him to do it. Nobody else did. He said, I'll tell you what I'll do. Yeah. He give me $100. I'll give him his watch and his ring back. My sister pulled out, picked up her and got $100 and gave it to him. He gave them all watching my ring back. Mm -hmm. Let's learn yeah. that we got to use these gifts that God has given us. Yeah. Yeah. Children, the gift is to say no to drugs and alcohol. Yeah. Peter is one that God worked in Peter's life in a powerful way. The gift and the great news is that God can work in our lives too. If we let them. Yeah. Hello, somebody. In our text today, Jesus asked his disciples, who does people say I am? Uh -huh. <laughs> they gave him several answers. Then he asked them directly, he said, but who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. That's what I want to know. Mm -hmm. Didn't I teach you better sense than that? My daddy had a gambling shack when I was a little boy. Right. My mama preached to us about gambling. Do not gamble. I didn't listen. I tell you, I was careful. I saw a way to win, and I thought to win. Peter is the bold one to step up and say, Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, God had worked in Peter's life. Think about these three things that I like to call God's gifts to us. And to Peter. That first one, God gave Peter the gift of position. And we know how important we feel that a position is to us because we are trained up to in our minds to say, don't be just an employee. Hmm? Get an education and start there, but you have to work your way. 
way out. Peter started out as just an ordinary man. But he take ordinary people to do extraordinary Amen. things. Amen. But God gave Peter position in that he put Peter where he wanted and needed him to be. It's not by accident that you hear <laughs> or you it's not by accident that any one of you sitting in this sanctuary, it's not by chance that we met. It was all a part of God's plan for our lives. When Peter was puffed up, God humbled him. When Peter boasted, he said, not me, Lord. Remember that? He said, I will never fall away. Yeah. I'll never forsake you. Yeah. God humbled him as he denied Christ three times. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. When Peter saw, when Peter was at his lowest point, God lifted Peter up with the words and the presence of Jesus Christ. Yeah. He'll surround us with people that you never knew, but with people that has the best interest in your life. Yeah, yeah. God changes our position from lost to found. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah, yeah. God changes our position from guilty to innocent. Yeah, yeah. Hello, somebody. God changes our position from condemned to forgiven. God changed our position from dead to life. Amen. I was in a dead world, living a dead life, and I couldn't see my way out because the dirt was in my face. And I felt like all I had to do was shovel another one, and my life would be completely gone. Yeah. But like Peter, when we are proud, God has a way of humbling us. Yeah. See, when we are down, God lifts us up. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. God also gave Peter a position by putting him right where he wanted him to accomplish his will. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Jesus said to Peter, say, Peter, you are on this rock I will build my church. You are not literally, as we think about it, what it says upon this rock, I'll build my church. Peter had no church. Some people, unfortunately, has misinterpreted this scripture because the Greek word for rock is Petra, which some have translated to mean Peter. It doesn't translate to Peter. It translates to rock. See, God wasn't ordaining Peter as the first pope. What he was saying was, Peter, you are right. And on this rock, this truth that I am the Son of God, the living God, and on that truth, I will build my church. Right, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. why he said, before you can have any position in my church, you got to give your life to him. It's not your church, but you are building on that rock that Jesus put here. Yeah. The hundreds yeah. and 57 years. Yeah. It's been many rocks passed through old Bethlehem. Yeah. And it's still rocks in here yeah. that you won't get off your rock and let God yeah. and give God some of your time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. I ain't stepping on nobody's toe but mine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> ouch. Just say ouch and move on. Gave Peter, put him in a position. On that day of Pentecost, Peter was there. 
and the keys of the kingdom ready to preach the first gospel message. Hello, somebody. Right. There on that day, the church was born. Yeah. Lives was changed. Yeah. History yeah. was altered forever. Yeah. All because God gave Peter position. Yeah. Oh, God. I truly believe God takes us to certain places in our lives yeah. to accomplish his will. Yeah. I ain't had nothing here in Judas, but God knew I needed to stay here. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to stay here, but he planted me here. Yeah. That seed called oh, Mr. Donald Blanche. Mm -hmm. That was the seed that he planted in me. Didn't know that it would change my life completely. Yeah. 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 I say God puts a guardian angel in all of our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not ripless, but believe it or not. Yeah. You see, yeah. he leads our path to cross paths with others. Yeah. What you talking about, Pastor? Who may need to hear the gospel. Yeah. 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 Hello, somebody. Yeah. See, your life is a gospel. You walk around with the gospel. Yeah. People want to know about the gospel. Yeah. It's the gospel that's got you smiling this morning. Yeah. Yeah. It's the gospel that woke you up this morning. Yeah. Yeah. It's the gospel that keep yeah. you from going where you used to go. Yeah. It's the gospel that keep you from associating with the people you used to. Yeah. It's the gospel that, that's, that's telling you that I've got to do better. Yeah. I've been trying it on my own. But I know somebody that changed my daddy's life. He was an alcoholic. But one morning, he got up and he said, I'm through with alcohol. No rehab. The rehab was Jesus Christ. He went to that rehab center and never drunk another taste of alcohol. Never seen him scrimmaging. Never seen him feeding. Never seen him wanting another drink. And I looked at my mother, a smoker, a chain smoker. And then one day, she came in uh, and she took that pack of cigarettes uh, and she threw them uh, in the trash can. And said, I'll never do it again. It is messing uh, with my body. And I know uh, I've seen it work. Uh, so I stand here today to witness to you that all things are possible. No matter where you might be now, you can be a better man, a better woman, a better teenager, a better child. If you would listen to somebody that loves. I thought I'd be finished by now. I gotta wake some people up. Shake the person next to you and say, wake up. <laughs> Secondly, God gave Peter the gift of power and passion. Hello, somebody. God took the energy that Peter had so many times and had exhibited in the wrong way. God took that energy and turned it into power and passion. Mm -hmm. Peter stood that day of Pentecost and preached with great power and great passion. Yeah. Peter had passion for what he believed in. Yeah. Peter had passion for who Jesus was. Yeah. Peter had passion for the salvation of others. Yeah. God gave Peter and the other apostles the power the power of the Holy Spirit resting on them. That same power he gave you and he gave me. Jesus said, I got to leave you. And they said, why? Don't leave us, Lord. He said, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send somebody that is just as powerful as I am. I'm going to send somebody 
God's opposite set. But now today, I can't ask him enough to forgive me of those sins. God can and will do what you ask him to do. Today, we accept Jesus as our Savior and baptize into him. We are given the Holy Spirit to live in us and give us the power that we need to overcome the temptations of this world. Hello, somebody. Today, when we accept him, we can be changed in the twinkling of an eye. I gotta leave you now. There's no reason for any Christian to, to live a life uh, of powerless, uh, a life without passion. If we live uh, that way, the problem is ours, not God's. But God did not give us uh, a spirit uh, of timidity, but one uh, of power. That word Trinity simply means he gave us the quality of life for not being shy or never being nervous when it comes to God. Hello, somebody. God gave Peter that third gift of perseverance. We all go through problems. We all struggle. We all have uh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we all have tribulations. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. We all have sleepless nights. <laughs> but Peter knew that God gave him the realization to suffer for Christ. He said, now I know that it's not me that lives. But it is the Christ that lives in me. Better suffering for doing good than doing evil. Perseverance. God said, Peter, in 4, 1 through 6, Peter said, Lord, suffering changes our focus from earthly things to things of Christ. Peter kept all confessing. 1 Peter 4, 12 through 16. He said, glorify God in your suffering. What you talking about, Pastor? How can I do that? By persevering, knowing that we've been made endure for a night. But joy, joy, I say joy, talking to the moment. God, in your suffering, will bring you through that 19th verse. Say, let those who suffer for Christ commit their souls to him and continue to do good. Hello, somebody. Suffering is but for a moment. But if you put on your armor of God, he said, I'll protect your mind, I'll protect your chest, I'll protect your back, I'll protect your feet, I'll protect you with the whole armor of God. Use your equipment. Stop complaining. Stop having pity parties. God can do anything but fail. God gave Peter persevering. Uh, we want a quick and easy way out. But now you have to realize it wasn't that Peter loved suffering. It was that he saw beyond the mountain. And he got up to the mountain top and he saw something so wonderful down here on earth. He saw the road that a short time of suffering was a small price.
price to pay that you're living now. He took it all, but God gave it back and better than it's ever been. Hello, somebody. Do you know what I'm talking about? When we're suffering in life, we need to think about what awaits us at the finish line of life. Please, God, celebrate saints who have gone on before us. He has a crown waiting for you that will not perish. He has victory and rest, sweet rest, no more suffering from sickness, no more pain from arthritis, no more pain from high blood pressure, no more pain from operations, no more pain of death. But you gotta be ready here on earth. You can't get there through my preaching. He just used me for this reason. But you got to account for your sins. Hello, somebody. I'm leaving you now. But remember that God gave you a gift. You better use it before you lose it. Hello, somebody. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? They didn't put all the nails in Jesus' hand. Because why, Pastor? Even though they nailed him to the cross and they lifted him high above, but nobody knows when they said that he came down, they never said they took the nails out of his hand. They never said they took the nails out of his feet. But right now, we are that nail that did not get nailed to the cross. And it's in him that we live and believe. It's in him that we have strength. It's in him that we persevere. It's in him that we have love. It's in him that we have peace. It's in him that we have mercy. Mercy. Anybody know about mercy? 
us. And I didn't complain when he brought me to Judas because he had something in Judas that I wanted. And my name is Gwendolyn the man, the bird. Is he all right? And I said, Lord, I'm happy now. I wanted a wife. I prayed for a wife. I wasn't ready right then. But he said, Robert, it's not up to you for me to do this thing. And I said, with resistance, I don't want no wife. But he showed me that I wasn't in charge. He said, responsibility. I'm going to leave with you. He elevated me at the Salvation Army. He laid a foundation around drug addicts and alcohol. He said, Robert, you're going to fight your way. If you love me, I gave you the gift to love other people just as I have The Lord got me healed for 20 years. I'd have been all right uh, sitting where you are next to my wife. Uh, that was fine with me. But God said, Robert, I got some work uh, for you to do. You are ready. Lord, I'm not. He said, yes, you are. I gave you the gift uh, to Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Christmas time is upon us. So we have to remember. <clears throat> that it's not your birthday. Everybody get presents but Jesus Christ. Think about that. Anybody wrapped him a present and put it over the Christian street? Be honest. I didn't. I didn't. Huh? But grateful, <laughs> gratefulness, I'm grateful uh, that the Lord allowed me to wake up this morning. I'm grateful that I can bring joy to some little kid, some teenager, to some husband, to some wife. That I can bring joy to somebody who won't have presents to open up. Think about it. There's a lot of men and women living on the street. Children are sleeping in the cars. They have no place of their own. So when you're spending all that money getting Macy's rich, getting uh, Oh, what's that store we go to everybody? Walmart. Get them rich. Target. <laughs> All them dress shops. What's the men show? What's that men? Men's warehouse. Huh? Men's warehouse? Men's warehouse. What's that other one? Dillard's. Dillard's and that, that other one for just men, but not instead of women. When it started out, it was just for us. What is it, KMG? Huh? I'm so glad for King G didn't see no skirts or no breasts or no bras. Then all of a sudden, hello somebody, they start putting them at the front of the store. 
advertising that we got women clothes now. Not just men stuff. And now I gotta fight through the women stuff just to get the men stuff. They done took over. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Why? Because they don't want to spend the money. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Hallelujah, y'all. Come on, let's go home. Oh, wait a minute. I got to at a church. extended invitation. There might be somebody today. 